Now that we've taken some time to enumerate web pages on port 80 and 443, we're going to go ahead and shift our focus over to SMB on port 139. So if you are unfamiliar with what SMB is, SMB is a file share. So think about your work environment. If you go to work and let's say that you have a drive you access, that's not like your common drive, like a C drive. Maybe it's like a Z drive or a G drive and you access that, that drive to get files and you can upload the files, download the files, and then maybe some of your coworkers can also see that file share. And that's why it's called a file share. Another example is say you have a scans folder and you go to your printer and you scan something and magically it appears in your scans folder on your computer. That's another example of SMB. So SMB is commonly used in work environments and internal environments. So when we see it, we, we think internal and we think about all these exploits that we, I have mentioned in the past with, especially with latest and greatest being MS-17010. And even though it's two years old, it still shows up. And it's gonna show up again in this course later on. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take a quick look at our scan and see what we have available to us. So on port 139 here, we see that, okay, NetBIOS, SMB, Workgroup, MyGroup, not really a lot of information. We could scroll down and the great thing about the dash capital A that I had you run with this scan is that it does run scripts for us. So these scripts that we're running go out and do a little bit of enumeration or additional enumeration. And here it came through and it's pulling down some information. We could see that, okay, the NetBIOS name of this is called Captrix. Well, we kind of already knew that. But, and we can see here that it's running SMB version two. We really don't know that for sure or what SMB version it's running exactly. So that's really important because the type of SMB version that's running could potentially lead to an exploit. And we need to know that kind of information. So we're gonna look for version information. The other thing is we're gonna to try to connect to this machine. We're gonna see if there's any connections available to us. And if we can make that connection, if we can get to the files on the share and see if there's anything potentially malicious or that we could do potentially malicious. So let's go ahead and let's get into a terminal. And we're going to load up a tool that you're going to be intimately familiar with by the time this course is over. And that tool is called Metasploit. So to run that tool, just go ahead and type in MSF console like this and hit enter. Now Metasploit is a exploitation framework and it does a lot more than exploitation. As you can see down here, you can see that it does exploits, what are called auxiliary modules. Now auxiliary modules is like scanning and enumeration. So we can actually do port scanning. We can do all kinds of information gathering with these auxiliary modules. They're awesome. We're going to go through one right now. There's also these post modules, which do post exploitation. So say we get a, a shell on a machine, which means we've exploited a machine. We can do some things in post. There's all different types of payloads, which we're going to cover when we get into the exploit section. And then the rest of this, you don't have to worry about that for the scope of this course, but we will be seeing Another tool by Metasploit, which is MSF Venom later in the exploit development section of the course, because we're going to utilize that to build payloads out for our own shells. So what we're going to do for now is we're just going to introduce this slowly. Don't feel overwhelmed. It's just a little bit of a learning curve when it comes to learning all the features that it has available, but it's second nature once you learn it. And it's going to be one of the most commonly used tools that you use as a tester in the field. So we're gonna go ahead and just search for SMB here. And I'm gonna do this the terrible way. We're just gonna search SMB. And you can see that there's 121 results. Now that's gonna be quite a pain to sift through. But what we're after, and say we, we didn't know much, but we were, were trying to see if, hey, maybe does Metasploit have any kind of modules? I don't know for SMB enumeration. Well, we know auxiliary modules are enumeration. And we can look right here in the front and see what type of module it is. So you see this is a post module and you see we could scroll up and we're going through exploits and then we're gonna go up into auxiliary. Now, the second part of this is the type of 
of action it's doing. So you can see auxiliary denial of service, auxiliary fuzzing, auxiliary scanning, gathering, and we're going to utilize this to our advantage. So we're going to take a look at the syntax. Now what we are after is SMB version information. And if we look kind of through this, we can come down to scanner here and you can see it's looking SMB 1, 2, GPP, which we're going to talk about. MS17010, which we've talked about, you have an auxiliary scanner to see if there's anything out there with that vulnerability. And if we look right here on number 60, auxiliary scanner SMB SMB version. Now this is a bit of a long convoluted way to do this. Go ahead and copy this by the way, or memorize your number. I'll give you two options. This is a long way to do it, but I wanted to show you this way of doing it because you're going to get better at it. But, you know, when you see something on a scan result and you don't know a lot about the tool, the best thing that you can do is just say, hey, you know, I know Metasploit does things like this. Let me see if maybe they have any sort of enumeration or exploitation. It never hurts to use a search feature to try to look up items and learn about them. So let's say we've never used this before. We're going to go ahead and just say use, and then we're going to paste this module in here. Your other option is instead of pasting this module, you can put the number that you had. So like, for example, 60, you could say use 60 and it will also load this module. So go ahead and hit, hit enter for that. And you can see here that it says now we're in an auxiliary module of scanner SMB SMB underscore version. So from here, it's always good to type out info and see what info is available and it just tells you a little bit about the module that you're running. So here you see that this is going to display version information about each system. Perfect. It's an SMB version detection. That's really what we're after right now. So this is great. And we have options here, these basic options. Now you're going to see me do this a lot. You can go right into options by just typing options and just see that instead of printing out all the long stuff if you don't want to. So in our options, we're presented with some items. We've got something called our host. Now our host is what stands for remote host. You're also going to see an L host later on, which stands for local host. Our host is always the victim. That's who we are attacking. This is the target address. You might see our host or our host plural. Our host means you can only import one host. If we have our host plural, we can use CIDR notation, meaning that we could put slash 24 and try to sweep a range, for example. But in this instance, we're only attacking one machine anyway. The rest of these, SMB domain, password, and user, if we knew the domain, password, and user in this instance, we could fill it out and try to get a little bit more information. But we are unauthenticated. We have no credentials at this point. So we're just going to go ahead and just put in our host, which is required, and not fill out any of the non-required fields here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to say set our host, and this isn't case sensitive. I just like to type it out case sensitive. And then the IP address of the machine that you're going to scan. So we're going to say 192.168 minus 57.139. And then I'm just going to type in run, give you a second to catch up and run. Okay. I totally lied. My IP address is 139. The machine I'm after is 134 and run, your screen should have looked something like this. I'm over here, instead of copying, pasting, trying to memorize. So hopefully you can see that I make mistakes too. So here we are, we see a little bit more information and it might not look like a lot right now, but knowing this Samba 2.2.1a is very specific and this is going to help us out quite a bit. So let's just copy this guy and let's open up that text editor we've had going and let's just come in here and maybe make some notes or just put it in here and say something like SMB and then we can just put paste that. We know the version now. And this is going to become important when we start doing research on what we've found. So we found all these different type of versions running up here and we're going to do research on exploitations against them. But we're also going to do research on this and exploitations against this. So as much detail as we can get that's what's important and what's going to set you apart from other hackers or other people even trying to break into the field is your ability to information gather and your ability to enumerate. If you can do both of those, the exploitation is actually the easy part in my opinion. 
So we've got the version information, that's great. We're gonna use a new tool now. So go ahead and go file new tab. And I'm going to go ahead and show you a tool called SMB client. Now SMB client is going to attempt to connect to the file share that's out there. Now, if we have the ability to connect to the file share with anonymous access, what that'll do is we can get in there and we could potentially see files. Now these files might give us an inkling of what's going on in the network, or they may even be, you know, valuable to us. They might be something like a backup file or password stored in a text file. You never know what you're going to find until you actually look. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is do a dash L and that's going to be to list out the files. And then the syntax looks something like this. You can do two backslashes. I like to do four. It really doesn't matter. And then you just type in the IP address of the machine that you want to try to connect to. So 192.168.57.134 for me. And then two more slashes like that. If you're running it with just two slashes, you don't have to put any there. So this is just character escaping because we're in Linux. So go ahead and hit enter. And you see that the server does not support extended security. Okay, don't worry about that. Anonymous login successful. Go ahead and hit enter on root password because we don't know it. And you can see that we did list out a file share. So let's go ahead and try to connect a different way. Let's tab up and let's delete this dash L. And we see that there's two file shares. There is an IPC dollar sign and an admin dollar sign. The IPC is not really usually valuable to us, but the admin would be really valuable if we could connect to that. So let's go ahead and just paste that in here and see if we can get that connection. Okay, let's try this, hit enter. And you can see we have wrong password. So it's not going to let us connect to this share with anonymous access. So that's unfortunate. We could also try proof of concept to see if IPC works. Hit enter on that. And you can see now we're actually in this. And this is interesting. So we could say help to see the list of commands. And it's very similar to being inside of a Linux machine now. We can do something like ls to list the files. And we're actually access denied here. So this is what we call a dead end. Uh, we can't really access this. So we don't have any information extra gathered. We're going to come back to this time and time again with SMB client. This isn't the last time you're going to see it in the course, but I want you to know that it exists in the reason behind what we're doing here. And this is some of where the information is coming from in our scan. We're trying to connect out. We see the server name is Captrix. There's a comment that it's a, a Samba server, and we're going to try to come in here and connect to a file and maybe get lucky. But this time we, we didn't get lucky. So we're just going to go ahead and exit out. So that's all you need to know right now for SMB. SMB is an amazing protocol. When I see SMB, I get very happy, but we're going to focus on that very heavily when we get into the internal part, the Active Directory portion of this course, because that's when things get really juicy. Right now, we're just going to do keep it simple, stupid on a lot of this stuff. It might feel really easy or very, very straightforward, depending, but I promise this is just going to keep building and building and building until we have a pretty big understanding on this. And there's gonna be a lot of repetition and a lot of practice. And I think that's the best way to learn. So from here, I'm gonna do a brief enumeration on SSH, how we can do enumeration with SSH. And then we're going to talk other items of enumeration and talk research. What are we doing? We've been collecting all this information and putting it into a text document. And you're probably like, so what? What can we do with it? And that's where things get exciting. And that's how we start to lead into exploitation. Uh, but we got to do a little bit more research first before we can get there. So that's it for this video. I'll catch you over in the next video when we are enumerating SSH.